story that isn't ratings poison. Republican congressman and game show host who stepped on a shovel, Matt Gates, told the crowd at a Women for America First rally that the only thing protecting them from deep state pedophiles is him, a shallow state pedophile. When you see the leaks and the lies and the falsehoods and the smears, when you see the anonymous sources and insiders forecasting my demise, know this. They aren't really coming for me. They're coming for you. I'm just in the way. The first casualties of cancel culture are always our nation's sugar daddies. Gates also mistakenly thought his sex crime investigation would bring him closer to a trailblazer in the genre. Gates tried to schedule a visit with Trump after it was first revealed that he was being investigated, but the request was rejected by aides close to the former president, who have urged Trump not to stick his neck out to defend Gates. Trump, of course, refusing to consort with someone caught committing sex crimes before being able to brag about them to Billy Bush. Amy given these heinous sex crime allegations, what kind of an approval bump can Matt Gates expect from the Florida Republican base? I, I don't know if it's looking good. I think when you've lost Donald Trump um, and you're a Republican and you're very much in his camp, entrenched in his camp, um, it's, it's to be expected that um, I think a lot of people will walk away from him, including his aides. A couple of them have already left. This is not who the Republican Party is. We stand for values like keeping our depravity unknown until it shows up in blood tests three generations later. Moving on, at a Republican National Committee donor retreat, President Trump pushed aside his old feud with Mitch McConnell and encouraged the party to embrace a fresh, backwards-facing rivalry with the same guy deriding him as a dumb son of a bitch. The president there showing a remarkable display of discipline by refraining from mentioning any of McConnell's body parts or the ethnicity of his family members. Jonathan, is this an early indicator that there might be a possible rift brewing in the Republican Party? <laughs> it's not only a, an early indicator, it's a mid-indicator. If you look at the difference between uh, cocaine Mitch McConnell's treatment from Donald Trump and Matt Gaetz's, uh, you've got Mitch McConnell, who's called a dumb SOB, but... For now, for all intents and purposes, Donald Trump is the Republican Party. Trump's got to realize the Republican Party doesn't like looking backwards. That's why Ronald Reagan was so successful. Look, it's goofy Trump, so you know what we're going to get. A death threat laced defense of killing half a million Americans. Trump's material is right, but the venue is all wrong. Why not try in between races at the dog track? Moving on, Tucker Carlson was caught supporting white replacement theory on a hot mic in front of hot cameras on his Fox Nation show where that's what the show is. In a democracy, one person equals one vote. If you change the population, you dilute the political power of the people who live there. So every time they import a new voter, I become disenfranchised as a mm. current voter. The power that I have yeah. as an American guaranteed at birth is one man, one vote and they're diluting it. Tucker there elaborating on the classic voting rights concept of one man, one vote, no new people, and I never die. He's correct to note that with each new naturalization ceremony, we see a drastic reduction in the political power of number one cable news host, multimillionaire Tucker Carlson. Amy, is Tucker out of bounds here giving voice on television to insane theories from the fringe core of our national psyche? I think it's really um, problematic, obviously, because it's and it's why you're seeing groups like the AD the Anti-Defamation League, to come out and say that he should lose his job. So I think it, it's going to continue. Everyone is saying we need to de-platform Tucker Carlson. But if you get rid of his show, he'll just come back more popular like that guy. What's his name? You never hear about his racist rants anymore. I I can't think of it. Now, former House Speaker John Boehner stopped by CBS Sunday morning to talk with John Dickerson about how he doesn't recognize today's Republican Party that he helped create. And then there's Senator Ted Cruz, who Boehner says is the ultimate false prophet. Perfect symbol, you know, of uh, getting elected, make a lot of noise, draw a lot of attention to yourself, raise a lot of money which means you're going to go make more noise, raise more money. Jonathan, do partisan obstructionists like John Boehner still have a home in the Republican Party? <laughs> uh, look, Boehner's coming out with this book. Uh, he apparently was drinking while he recorded it. And then just remember, it was John Boehner who led the Tea Party down uh, the Capitol steps for the first big Tea Party rally before the 2010 election. Gang, what's Boehner's problem here? In D.C., you got to raise money to raise money to raise money to raise money. Crap, I'm stuck in a loop. Bring out Fixie the Mule to fix me again. Oh, thanks, Fixie. Stay 
close in case I can't stop talking about the chick from Risky Business, okay? <gasps> now, a lot of people are saying Boehner has been too harsh on Ted Cruz, but at least he didn't call Ted a repellent assemblage of jowl flab and pubic hair who looks like someone scooped all the sludge behind their toilet into a men's warehouse suit and taught it to smirk while explaining away school shootings. Oh, I'm stuck in a Ted Cruz insult loop. Fixie, hell! Oh, thanks, Fixie. Well, it's time to humanize people that perceive themselves to be gods amongst disgusting, disease-ridden peasant scumbags. We're talking Beltway gossip. A source inside the congressional gym told me that after Marjorie Taylor Greene did one of her Mach 3 pull-ups, they had to use two Chevy Tahoes to put her lower half back in socket. Get out. <laughs> well, listen to this. A British source heard a doctor telling Queen Elizabeth that Prince Philip's final words were, I thought I asked for a white Doctor, <gasps> can you oh, believe? Wow, boy. Bridgerton. A friend of mine said she saw Madison Cawthorn in the stands at a women's college softball game making the licking finger gesture. Surely, dirty dog. Get this, I saw advisors to Virginia Governor Ralph Northam trying to dissuade him from investigating the racist police stop incident by going, quote, undercover and you know what I mean. Oh, and that is your Beltway Gossip. <laughs> <laughs>